Nikki McRae Penson, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to help introduce you to Bulldog Nation, because that's exactly what I would like to do in our time that we have together today. Thank you so much, Debbie. It's so good to see you. <laughs> it's great to see you, and uh, I'm so happy and excited for you. I think people talk about being prepared and being ready to take on a job or whatever, but then the word fit seems to come to mind a lot. How do you fit at Mississippi State? Well, I think, you know, it's all about family, it's all about passion, um, and it's all about winning. Um, when I came down here, I had the opportunity to really look um, Dr. Keenum in the eye, um, AD John Cohen in the eye, and the support staff, and I can tell you, they are great people, um, but they are passionate about student athletes, they're passionate about Mississippi State, and they're passionate about the women's basketball team, and I could feel that. I needed to feel that. And that is a connection that, you know, you look for. And um, that drew me here. A lot of times I hear head coaches talk about their relationship with the athletic director and that being an important aspect of helping them individually grow, but also helping their program grow. What are you looking forward to most about spending time with John Cohen? Well, he's just, he's honest. Um, he, you know, he understands what being a coach um, it's like, especially, you know, he, he was the baseball coach, but we have some things in common. And I, I really, really like that. Um, we both are overcomers. I think we both have experienced some things in our life and um, that have been challenging, but as you know, that have been life changing situations. And, you know, to be able to talk about those things was really important to me, but just working with someone that have been in my shoes you know, from recruiting and understanding what it's like to be a coach. I mean, that just, that means the world. So one of the first things that I know coaches always talk about when they take a job is trying to make sure they re-recruit all the players that they have on their roster first before they start looking out for staff and, and other things. Why, I read where you said that was important to you, why? I mean, number one, it's real important that I build a relationship with this current staff. You know, my hat's off to Vic. I mean, he's done something amazing here. And yes. these ladies are awesome. Um, what he's accomplished here with these young ladies, um, with this fan base is truly remarkable. And I just can't thank him enough. I just walked into a gold mine. But they know Vic. They don't know me. They know of me. So I have to get them to understand who I am. And that's been the biggest thing. And me understanding them. You know, and I've told them it's not about me, it is about we, and just trying to figure out their needs, what they're looking for, and all of those things, because I would say that's an area that I've grown, you know, um, going from an assistant to a head coach is just understanding these young people and, and making them feel a part of it. So Nikki, break down a little bit of a self-assessment or a self-scout. Give us your DNA as Nikki the person, give us your DNA as Nikki the head coach. But Nikki, the person, obviously, I'm a mother, um, I'm, a, I'm a wife, I'm a cancer survivor, I'm loyal, um, I'm a competitor. Um, Nikki McCray, as the coach or the scout, relentless, okay, fearless, <laughs> um, hate to lose. I mean, right. I can go on and on, like, I'm going to get the job done, I'm going to figure it out. I go way back with you, Nikki. I've watched you for a long time. I've covered you as a college player. I've covered a lot of your international, your professional career. Uh, I've certainly covered you as a coach. Um, let's go back to one of those words that you said, relentless, because many people knew you as a really great defensive player who two times won the SEC Player of the Year. And your offensive skill set wasn't what they talked about first. But as soon as you got to the ABL, you led the league in scoring. You were MVP. You were averaging like 21 points a game. I remember that because I watched it. I was there watching it, covering the Columbus Quest. When you talk about relentless, sometimes people are motivated by things that people say you can't do. What are you motivated by? Hey, I'm, I'm driven by challenges. And I think, you know, when I was at Tennessee, obviously, you know, that was a staple of ours, our our defensive mentality, and I did what I needed to do to help us win. Um, but I was challenged in a different way when I got to the ABL. Number one, I came from the Olympic team, and then I became the face of a program. And I had to understand what that meant. And I was so fortunate to be coached by Brian Agler, who really believed in me and gave me an opportunity to let me find 
my way, but I didn't want to let him down, you know, so I figured it out. Um, I got in the gym and I just continued to work on my offensive skills um, because I knew I had the part, the desire, you know, from a defensive and an effort standpoint, but I just wanted to, you know, be the complete player. And that, that's the mentality that I had. So I worked, I worked and it was uncomfortable, you know, because I wasn't a three point shooter. I didn't have the skill set that some of my teammates, I wasn't trying to be them. I was just trying to be Nikki. And I just found my own way within his system to be able to, you know, do the things that I needed to do for us to win our first ABL championship. How do you transfer all of those intangibles that you just talked about, the relentless, the mental toughness, the competitiveness into a group of young women that you're trying to help compete at the highest level? How does that work? I think it first starts with relationships. Um, number one, um, me understanding who they are and they understand who I am because when you build that, then I'm able to coach them a certain way. Um, but what's here, I mean, they know what winning looks like. They don't know what winning a national championship looks like because it hasn't been done, right. but they have, a, is there's a blueprint of what it looks like at the highest level and being able to sustain, sustain the success. Um, it's just constant reminders of who you are, you know, how to empower yourself to be great, how to empower others around you to be great, all of those things which makes winning fun. And it just starts to happen naturally just because you have a certain standard about yourself. You have an uh, incredibly infectious quality about you that makes people want to do more. Like I'm starting to sit up straighter in my seat as I'm listening to you because I'm getting excited about what you're going to put on the floor, how exciting it's going to be to watch your team play. This fan base is hungry. They are hungry. I mean, they continue to press and press and press because – in a positive way because they love the game. And like you said, Vic and his staff have done such a good job. How do you make sure you keep them excited about what you're doing? I think again, you know, it goes with relationships. I know just being, making them feel a part of it. They already are a part of it. You know, when I talk to our players, I said, what's one thing you love about Mississippi State? Ah, oh, they talk about the fans. They said they absolutely <laughs> yeah. love, it, you know, and, that is just something, you know, when you invite people into your world and you make them feel wanted, I mean, I mean, you can't really sell that. That is just, that's unbelievable. So, I mean, I'm just coming in. I, I want to show them who I am. I want them to get to know me, my family, um, my little son, Thomas, our dog, Max. Um, I want them to know us and be, to be able to touch us. Nothing's going to change with that part. They know this team. They know them inside out. I'm talking to some of them on the phone and they're excited and they're excited about the players. So it's just continue to build those relationships with them and just, you know, let them see who we are. Vic's teams played pressure defense and they played a lot of dribble drive with a lot of talented players. You have a lot of players returning that got a lot of significant playing time, got great experience. How do you see, or have you had time to even think about the personnel that you'll have and what you would really like to do? Well, I think, you know, the biggest thing, I know what's coming back. 70% of our offense is coming back. That's a great thing. Um, it is, what's really good is that I run something similar, and I think you saw us play at Old Dominion a little bit. Um, I run something similar, um, and as you know, I'm known for my defense, so that's not going to change. Um, but everything we do will be attacking, you know, attacking aggressively. We want to run. Um, we want to get up the floor. Um, you know, we got a lot of pieces and I want to be able to play everybody just because I want us to be fresh. You know, I don't want us to be tired, you know, um, in February. I want us to be fresh. So having the, a deep roster and being able to play people is a good thing. And I'm so glad that, you know, these young kids got a chance to play. They were thrown in the fire. The only thing that they don't know is what NCAA tournament looks like. Right. And, um, but you want them to be ready yeah. for that that and now we're in unprecedented times right now because they're home and there's no accountability but for me I'm excited about this time because I get to build a relationship with them so let's go back to when you were a player for a second because you just mentioned something really interesting to me about players being accountable being home working on their own right so when in our day and I'm way back before you we, that's what we did we went home with a workout 
we worked out all summer. You came back with your workout. You practiced. Uh, you conditioned. Practice started October 15th. The first games weren't played till the first week of November. So you had probably maybe three or four weeks with your team to get right. ready for that first game. How can you make sure that you can trust, because you're in a, a relationship building process yep. with your players, that they're going to understand how important it is for them when they come back to school that they're ready to go and ready to play. Like, we're going to hit the ground running and we can't be waiting on you to make your times. Yeah, I think one of the things now that we can do everything is volunteer. And, um, you know, I'm actually meeting with our strength and conditioning coach, you know, this week to kind of talk about plans. And I know everything is on hold because I don't know, you know, what this coach is like, Vic was right. like this and things like that. So we're going to have a plan, you know, for our kids. Um, I don't think our kids are, I mean, they want to come back to campus. That's, yeah. that's what I'm hearing. I come back, you know, obviously they can't. So when you hear those things, that is a, that is a sign of, you know, I want to get better. Now they're just trying to figure out solutions at home, um, you know, through all of this, you know, they're learning their parents' moods and every sisters and brothers, but now they got to figure out, you know, solutions. And I say young people, they have to problem solve. So now they're having a problem solve, whether it's abroad, <laughs> whether it's in my room, whether it's on the street, whatever. Um, but they're finding ways to problem solve right now, which is, which is good. We're not having to tell them, but um, we're going to have a plan. Um, that we will send them and just understand what space that they have so that they can at least see something on paper. I think the problem solving is going to be a blessing coming out of this. One of the things that we're all going to be blessed to see the maturity when they, when they do return. Um, you, you mentioned Brian Agler. He's one, one coach. You've had the privilege and the luxury of being around some of the great names in our game. We're talking about Pat Summit and Tara Vandeveer who coached you in the Olympics, Dawn Staley, who you sat alongside. Uh, when you start talking about greatness like that and, and people that have achieved things that no one else has done, uh, what can you draw from that? Or can you fi find yourself falling back on, oh my gosh, that sounds like exactly something Pat would have said? All the time. You know, when I you know, transitioned from being an assistant at South Carolina to being a head coach at Old Dominion, I'm just so thankful you know, for all of the coaches that I've been around. But when you, you know, sit alongside Don for nine years, you know, you see the blueprint. And not only, you know, the blueprint of taking a program from South Carolina and making it a national powerhouse, but grooming the assistant coaches, you know, to be head coaches. And, you know, Don is just so awesome because she understands her personnel that's, you know, that her, that's her being a point guard and just being able to, you know, tap into areas that you need to get better. And when I tell you, she challenged me in so many ways um, just to be, you know, a better coach and to be ready. Um, she prepared me, you know, for, for Old Dominion. You know, when you think that you're not ready, she's like, Nick, you're ready. And, you know, when someone says that to you, it gives you a calmness. But all the coaches that I've been around, um, whether it's Tar, you know, Pat, playing for Pat, Gino, um, Dawn, I mean, it's a lot of great ones, Tara. I just take everything that I've learned and I mold it into who I want to become. But one thing that I do know, the fundamentals are the same. You know, mm -hmm. how you do things is you're going to do it the right way. They're not going to sacrifice culture for anybody. You know, this is the way it is. We're going to do things the right way. Winning looks, as John would say, looks, feels, and sounds a certain way. And I'm a really big believer in that. So one thing John Wooden would say when you're talking about that makes me think of we're, we're not coaching plays. We're coaching people, right? right? We're always coaching people. And then they run the place that we, we try to help them or we try to help them develop to become better. Do you have a, a certain philosophy about player development or something that, you, you know, you have found as it's like your go to in your hip pocket that when you need something, you know, that you can rely on it? I think, you know, player development is really key. Um, for me, I want our players to want that to be a lifestyle. How do we get them to, you know, buy into that? You know, they have to understand it is, you know, it is how you get better. And, um, you know, but you got to want it. You got to love what you do. But it is, that is the question. How do you get them to understand this is a way of life? There is balance because I have balance, but it is a way of life. 
and um, and it's fun if you know how to you know balance everything. And part of that is emotional um, because we are you know we're here, but we have to be able to handle our day because our day is full of stuff and and we also have to give attention to the things that matter when i asked you about your dna about you at nikki the person the first thing you said was mom um i i don't know about you I, you know i'm obviously i'm a mom i've got three boys you have one and a lot of people ask about the life work balance and i, I sort of get tired of people asking me that because I sort of feel like it has become a lifestyle. It's what we do. My guys are adjusted to it. My husband's adjusted. Your, your husband, Thomas, I mean, he's going to be the greatest welcome mat for Mississippi state women's basketball that there is. He's a guy that is supportive and he is, he's on it and, and he's caring and concerning about other things besides what just you're doing. He sees the big picture because I've seen him yes. and I've watched him in the stands. Um, how much, of his support in this decision, uh, because it's a team. It's not yes. just it's a team. How, how, how important is that for moving forward for you to have the success? It's one thing to get the job, but it's another thing to continue to, to thrive. Well, he's been, you know, he's been with me every step of the way. And I think this isn't something that he's not very familiar with. You know, just me being a pro, you know, I mean, he traveled everywhere with me and I'm so thankful that his job allowed him to do that everybody on our Olympic team knows Thomas you know I mean because you know it's a family so he is a part of the family and um, he's used to getting up and, and, and going with me as long as he it fits me and it fits us because he knows who I am and he knows you know how I operate that is key and for me that's why I really had to come and step foot you know, on Mississippi State's campus, I needed to see the grocery stores. I needed to see the parks. I needed to go through the neighborhood, yeah. people waving or whatever the case may be. And I felt that it was really good to just come down. I couldn't make an informed decision without doing that. And he knows that about me. And, um, and you know, he's been there every step of the way. And, um, but they're going to love Thomas now. I don't know if they're ready for little Thomas, but he is, <laughs> he's a big part of it. And, I'm always going to be mom to him. You know, I am and I'm coach and then I'm coach mommy. So I think, you know, sometimes like when we lose a game, he goes, coach, you lost the game. But then when we win, hey, coach mommy. So <laughs> he has two things that he says to me, but he's aware. He uh, very much like Pat in raising Tyler, you're raising Thomas in a very similar setting. Um, you're in a community that has a incredible spotlight on you and your program. He's going to have a little bit of a spotlight on him as well. How do you make sure you help him through that, keep him protected? He's going to go to school like a rock star every day. I mean, how, how do you keep him uh, so that he, I, he understands? I want him to be Thomas. I mean, he is so full of life and he loves people, you know, and that's who he is. And, you know, he's going to be the biggest cheerleader. He's going to have his gear on. He's going to love and hug on our players. I mean, he's going to tell them to make shots. He's going to tell them to get stops. I mean, he is <laughs> so involved and, you know, he's just a people's person. And for him, it's all about friends, you know, and just his teachers and, you know, the people that's, that make him who we are. I mean, he's just, he loves life and that's all he knows. I mean, he knows that I'm the coach but he loves his friends. He wants to go do laser tag. He wants to play soccer. I mean, that's all he's worried about. And he'll be able to do all of that in a wonderful community at Mississippi State. Yes, I mean, I knew- Got the bell right here. Yeah. <laughs> Let me hear it. about this, <laughs> the cowbell right now. I, I love it. Office. <laughs> I, I knew you were ready to be a head coach for many years. You'd worked your way through, but I don't know if you'll remember this time. I ran into you in the airport and you were carrying your breast pump with you. You were going on the road recruiting and scouting. And you were, and, and when I saw you in that moment with that machine over your shoulder, <laughs> that's when I knew that uh -oh. I knew you had the full package ready to roll, like you were ready. I did, I just had my son and um, you don't miss the beat. It's just, it's what we do. And uh, you know, I had the breast pump and I do remember that. Cause you're like, what is that? I was like, that's my breast pump. And, uh, <laughs> 
and I had to carry it with me because I was newly, I was still, you know, fresh. And, um, but I think I was going to see Asia Wilson. I can't remember. I was everywhere, but I know that I was, you know, recruiting, but it's just what we do. It is that balance. Um, I didn't make an excuse. Um, and that's what you do when you love what you do. You just figure it out. Well, Nikki, I can't wait to come down there and cover your team and, and to come to practice and learn from you and watch you continue on this great path that you started many years ago on that park that probably bears your name in Collierville, Tennessee. Uh, I think it's just remarkable what you've been able to do with your career. And you're, our game is better because you're in it leading a, a wonderful franchise of, or wonderful univers, university, excuse me, wonderful university at Mississippi State. So I really appreciate you giving me this time. I thank Mississippi State for allowing me to do this with you. But thank you so much, Debbie. You know, I'm so fond of you and I'm just so appreciative of what you do and just how um, committed you are to our game and just how you have a voice for our game. And, you know, I mean, you support us so much and thank you for all you do. You know, I love your kids and I can't wait for you to get to start. Well, we all have a lot of fun, but I really appreciate you. I'll wait for you to pick up the tab for me at the Starkville Cafe and I'll even wear your colors. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Nikki. Best of luck. Be blessed.